I've said this before that there are many ways to keep a ball python successfully. And just because you do something a certain way and somebody else does it a different way doesn't necessarily make either one of you wrong. But when you're a new keeper, it's sometimes hard to weed through the advice on the internet and figure out what's just a different way of doing things versus what's bad advice. So I'm gonna give you a shortcut. Here are six pieces of bad advice that you'll commonly find on the internet. Why don't you just stay on on this? Because you don't have to, you're not a co-host today. Hi, hi, it's nice to see you, but you're not a co-host. Okay, this is, you're trying, you're taking Evie's spotlight here. Welcome to the green room, I'm Bob Bledsoe. This is Evie, who's long overdue to be a co-host. She's a lovely vanilla head sunset ball python, and she just isn't on the channel as much as she probably should be. Uh, this is Stella, Stella? Yeah, that's Stella. Uh, I've got super dwarfs on the ladder just because that's where they are today, but this video is primarily about ball pythons. So we got a ball python video with probably some super dwarf cameos as we move along. I almost forgot, that's my brother Kent behind the camera. Here's a piece of bad snake information. You should have one in your house. False. I know a guy who got his entire leg eaten by his pet snake. You know a guy? Kent, who is it? I know a guy whose brother has a friend whose dad got his leg eaten by its snake. And he showed me a picture of the dude's wheelchair, so how are you gonna refute that? Thanks, Kent. Okay, here we go. Now, since these are things that people say on the internet all the time, there's a good chance that as I go through this list, you might disagree with me on one or two things because maybe you've typed these things on the internet yourself. I would just ask you to keep an open mind and I will as well. So if you disagree with me on something, let me know in the comments and maybe you'll change my way of thinking of it. Number one, your substrate sucks. Don't use aspen, it's too dry. Or whatever substrate you have, that comes with mites, don't use that. I realize that this is two different things but they're both substrate related so we're gonna call them one and I'll cover them really fast. First of all, the thing about aspen, is that a lot of people give advice on the internet based on their setup and based on their climate without knowing what the other person's setup is or what the other person's climate is. And with regard to this Aspen thing, Aspen works great if you live in a tropical environment. Aspen probably works great if you live in Mississippi. I'm just guessing somebody in Mississippi comment and let me know if Aspen works for you for ball pythons. Aspen definitely doesn't work for me in the arid Los Angeles desert area, but probably works plenty for you, dear viewer, who lives in the jungles of Vietnam. All right, substrate coming with snake mites. The thing about snake mites is they are specific to snakes. They don't just randomly pop up anywhere. So the facility that's manufacturing the substrate would have to also be like breeding snakes right next to where they're throwing out the chip or whatever. But here's what's way more likely, is somebody walks into a pet store to get some substrate. They see a bunch of snakes that they wanna hold and decide if they wanna buy or whatever. They get some mites from those snakes on their clothes. They bring their substrate home. And a week later, they're on the internet going, my substrate came with mites. It's a very common and likely thing to happen that you handle a snake at a pet store and bring mites home on your clothes. It is highly unlikely that a substrate would be packaged with mites inside that would then infect your, your snakes. So that's, that's what's happening. Be careful at pet stores holding other animals. You know, wash your clothes, take a shower, stuff like that right after you get back from a pet store. Number two. A lot of you might disagree with me on this one, but stay with me for the explanation. Heat mats aren't a good primary heat source for ball pythons. Now here's the deal with this. In order for a reptile, including ball pythons, to live and digest their food, they need heat. They've gotta have warmth for their digestion to happen. If they don't have heat, that meal will rot in their belly and kill them. So they need heat. Heat mats provide heat. And they have provided heat to reptiles for many years, including probably more than 50%, well more than 50% of ball pythons that are, that are kept captive in the world are kept successfully on heat mats. Because think of all of the racks and tubs and things like that, whether you like racks or not, it doesn't matter. There, you, you can find many, many ball pythons that live long, healthy lives in racks with belly heat. You'll also find the vast majority of owners uh, keeping ball pythons with belly heat, maybe a combination of belly heat and, and overhead. Uh, but many, many use belly heat successfully because the only purpose of, of that heat mat or heat tape 
is to provide heat. Now, I think that th there's a Facebook group, there might be a couple Facebook groups that rail against heat mats because there are overhead heat sources that provide additional um, uh, like UV and, and different free, um, frequencies. That's not the right word. You know, different types of rays is what I'm trying to say. And those are good. Those are extra bonus things and, and those are great to use. But as a primary heat source, because ball pythons need the heat in order to survive, a heat mat works fine. The people that are saying don't use heat mats are setting up their enclosures so that they don't need to use heat, heat mats. Because as I've said before, ball pythons do not need belly heat. They just need heat. So if you set up your enclosure so that, so that you know, just overhead heat works, that's great. They're gonna be just fine. Some people have an enclosure where they need belly heat and overhead heat. I have that. And some people have enclosures like in a tub where you just have belly heat. Let me give you a good example here. For the inspector, he goes all the way underground. He's got a subterranean hide and he sits on the glass. That's where he likes to be. So if I had that set up and I was a new keeper and was listening to, to somebody say, oh, don't use heat mats, they're no good then I wouldn't put a heat mat on the glass and he'd be sitting on that cold glass all the time and he wouldn't have enough heat. Now I also have a CHE because that's a tall glass enclosure and I need extra heat. So I've got a CHE on the on the uh, warm side hide also that, that provides heat, but he doesn't ever come out and bask in it. He just sits in his, in his hide and, well, that's not true. It's on at night and he comes out at night sometimes. But the point is that if I used this setup and didn't have a heat mat, it would be a wrong setup. It wouldn't work. So this goes back to not taking into consideration that people have different setups. Some people have setups that absolutely require belly heat. They've gotta have a heat mat or heat tape for the type of setup that they have. Keep in mind that the main thing we're looking for from a heat source is heat. Extra wavelengths and things like that, extra rays, UV, stuff like that is great to have, but we are basically looking for heat so that this animal can survive a digestion process. That being said, I am all for creating a setup where you just have overhead heat because I think it's great to provide heat along with other UV rays or deep heat projector type stuff. That's all really good for your snake, but I would never tell somebody that belly heat is wrong or bad because it works great. All, all of my ball pythons have belly heat right now and they do wonderfully. This is one that I see addressed in videos like this a lot but I still see it constantly. A new keeper will get a ball python and then say something about number three feeding in a separate container because it's so common still for pet store employees to sell a snake and then say make sure you feed it in a separate container or it'll get cage aggressive ball pythons do not get cage aggressive uh, that just means that they're food motivated and they come out striking now if they do typically they don't get like that but some might just use hook training or tap training that's there's a video right up there about that but you definitely don't need to feed in a separate enclosure. You risk stressing the animal out and you risk a regurgitation. Plus, it's just an extra step that's super annoying. Imagine those breeders that have hundreds of snakes on feeding day, if they had to remove each snake and put it in a separate container to feed the animal and then put it back in its, in its other container after it's eaten, that would be ridiculous. So it's absolutely not necessary. You don't have to do it. Are there people that have done it for years and years and years and it's just fine? Yes, because the snake probably gets used to it and it's not stressful to be moved back and forth, but you just, there's no need for it. So don't do that. Don't, don't start off as a keeper feeding in a separate container. Keep your animal in their home. Let them know that that's where they live and that's where they eat. It's the best way to do it. Before we get to number four, let's head outside for Kent's Corner. Hi, and welcome to this thing. I'm Kent. Today, I'd like to dispel some myths that are all over the internet about me. Number one, I think Kent must live with Bob. Well, that's false. I'm not gonna live with my brother, that would be weird. I live with my mom, like Pete Davidson does. I'm basically as cool as Pete Davidson. Number two, I think Kent is dating one of the Kardashians. Nope, that's Pete Davidson. I haven't come out publicly to say that I'm dating any Kardashian. Publicly. Number three, I can tell Kent and Bob apart, but you know who I get confused? Kent and Pete Davidson. Do you like Pete Davidson, Kent? I mean, I don't know. He's pretty cool, I guess. Whatever. I don't think those are things that you actually found on the internet. Well, that's your opinion. Thank you for watching Kent's Corner. I'm way back here because Echo's trying to crawl on my head. I spent some time yesterday reworking these boards, and I did that in order to make room for new members in the Horde of Keepers Secret Society over on Patreon. A lot of these members actually helped out this video in giving me some ideas of 
bits of misinformation that they've seen on the internet. I feel like this Patreon scroll is really sloppy. But uh, anyway, thanks so much to the Patreon supporters who are helping out the channel and giving me ideas and even just help on videos when I need it. And look, I even redid the black box logo because I decided that channel sponsors should have their own board. So special thanks to black box cages. Are you just trying to get to me or are you trying to get to your target? What are you up to, huh? What are you up to? Crazy. So for the back half of this, we have Lydia Dietz because I just pulled her out from under the couch. She's like, dude, really? And apparently we also still have Echo. Number four, light will hurt a ball python's eyes. This is just people repeating bad information that they read somebody else write on Facebook or Reddit or whatever. Uh, light will not hurt a ball python's eyes. The issue is this, there is a problem with light if you have it on for 24 hours. And it used to be, and it still is sometimes, that people will buy a red light because they think that ball pythons can't see red, and then they just have that on 24 hours. They can still see that light, and you need to have a day-night cycle for any snake. It needs to know when it's light and dark out. And so that's not an ideal situation. That's kind of a bad situation if you have light on 24 hours. But light in general will not hurt their eyes. I have light in this vivarium right here. It's, a, it's for the plants. It's a grow light that the plants need. But the inspector has no problem with that. It's on for 12 and off for 12, and he does just fine. Sometimes I feed him in the middle of the day or in the morning, sometimes I feed him at night. Doesn't matter either way, if he smells food, he comes right out and gets his food and it's no problem. So this one really isn't that big of a deal, but if you wanna have light in their enclosure, even if it's just an LED light during the day because it looks cool, or a grow light for the plants or something like that, it's fine, it's not gonna hurt their eyes. It's not ideal to use a light as a heat source. I think if you're gonna have an overhead heat source, it's better to have a CHE or a DP projector or a radiant heat panel, something like that. Number five, don't worry if your ball python goes off food, that's normal behavior. I see this all the time because it's very common for people to post, help, my ball python won't eat. And then under that comment is tons of people going, my snake went off food for nine months and he didn't die. And my snake has been off food for four months and he's just fine and don't worry, it's normal behavior. Here's the thing, it is not normal behavior. It is common behavior. There's a difference. Normal behavior implies natural behavior, like it's just natural, that's just what they do. Common behavior is that it's common for a ball python to go off food for some reason. And this for some reason is very important because when, when you post on Reddit or Facebook or whatever and say, my ball python's not eating, what do I do? And all these people just go, oh, it's normal, don't worry about it. That's gonna cause that person to not look into any potential underlying issues. Is there something wrong with their environment? Is there something they don't like about their enclosure? Is there a health problem with that snake? You know, you can start looking into potential other uh, signs of a health issue if they all of a sudden go off food. There's a ton of things that you should be looking into if your snake goes off food because it is not normal natural behavior for a ball python to do. Now, I'm not talking about breeding adult females and males. The female will go off food when she's developing follicles or a lot of times right after she ovulates, she'll go off food, that's normal. And um, a male ball python will stop eating oftentimes during breeding season. And sometimes if you've had your snake for a number of years, they'll establish, especially the males, they'll establish a time of year where they go off food for a few months. Then you've got a pattern and you can say, okay, this is my snake and this is what they do. And then we've got a pattern of that. But until you've established a pattern, it's very important if you have a snake that eats normally and then all of a sudden goes off food, there's a number of things to check for to see if there's a problem there. And uh, so don't just think it's normal, everything's fine because there's a good chance that everything's not fine. So you gotta figure that out. And number six, Ball pythons pretty much operate off instinct. You can't do much with them. There's not much to that reptile brain of theirs. Now, I understand why people think this. There's, I see this type of thing posted a lot. And there's, it's posted for good reason. That used to be the science. So there was actual science that was out about how simple the reptile brain is and how they just run off of, off of instinct. There is now new science out, but when new science comes out, it takes a long time to get into the general population. It's kind of a slow process. But instead of talking about the scientific papers and the structure of the reptile brain and how it's complex and such like that, let's just talk about real world examples. If I had a snake that was wild, they would be constantly hiding and prefer to hide and be really fearful when I opened their enclosure. 
As it is, let's take Captain Farrell for example. When I open his enclosure, he comes right out because he's used to exploring. He knows the area, he knows it's safe. I can put my hand in front of him and he knows that I'm safe. It'll take him a minute to tongue flick and make sure that it's something that he recognizes, but then he'll crawl right over it, no problem. That's a reptile that went from instinct to learned behavior. Lydia Dietz right here has a very specialized bit of training that none of my other snakes have. I trained her to not go in the racks behind the tubs and she hasn't done it for probably over a year. What she does is always sticks her head in, in there like she's going to go in. It looks like she's going to go in, but then she comes right back out because I've trained her not to do that. Uh, it took me a little while, but she now knows that if she tries to go in behind a rack, that just leads back to her tub. I just pull her out and put her back in her tub. And we did that enough times that she finally learned it. And again, it's probably been a year since she's actually tried to move her entire body into that rack. Her instinct as a ball python is to go into a small dark place. They love to go in behind those tubs. She'll try to get in behind other small dark places when she's cruising around. She'll go under the couch and in the, in the blankets or in the pillows, stuff like that. But she knows that the rack is, is not a good place for her to go. You're so smart, Lydia Dietz. You're such a smart girl. Some of my ball pythons are actually target trained, including Lydia Dietz. Uh, this goes against their instinct because a snake's instinct is to go into food mode. And food mode is strike at anything that well, I know food's out, I'm just going to not think and strike at anything. The snakes that are target trained have learned to engage their brain and follow a target and interact with it in order to get food. So they've got to not strike at the target, but follow the target, touch it with their nose or their tongue, and then food comes. That is taking a snake from their instinctual food mode into thinking mode which I think is really interesting and smart. So I have videos on snake training and behavior. And the fact is that if you work with them, they can learn things. They are smart. If you don't work with them, there's a good chance that your snake is going to act more like a wild ball python. And they're going to be a lot more reclusive and a little bit more boring, maybe a lot more boring and way less interactive, which might be why some keepers have described ball pythons as just pet rocks. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Alexa, what tattoo would make me more like Pete Davidson? Alexa. Hey, Google. Hey, hey, Google. Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. I'm asking Jeeves, what tattoo would make me more like...